It's really hindered my relationship with my stepkids. And it gets old to be saying you're sorry because after so many times of saying you're sorry, you even don't feel like it means much anymore. And the ability to cry, you're always in this parasympathetic um, and you're never connected to your sympathetic nervous system. So you're, you seem like you don't care. It, but even though I do and I feel it in my chest, the emotional part of it just doesn't come out. And that I feel like that's all been taken away from all these experiences in my life. And, and it makes me seem cold to some people. I would still do it all over again, but I wish that maybe I'd heard about this sooner. And I really hope that this can replace the antidepressants and, and because I feel like it changes who I really am. But at the same time, my experiences in the military have changed who I really am. And so you find yourself, who am I? You know, I'm not who I was before my experiences. The medication doesn't allow me to be who I am today because it's changing my how my brain works with depression and so now my question to myself is and I look in the mirror and I go who are you being somebody that was pretty senior in the military I think it's important as a leader even though I'm not a leader in my current job, but as a leader in the military, if I can't come and do this, why would I expect a younger service member to try this? You start feeling like, how did I make it out of this? You know, how did I make it out of these experiences and not, not get killed? You know, how did we go over there and of 700 people only lose seven and we saved 127? But then you start thinking, is there anything else that I could have done? Did I train my guys well enough to handle that situation? And did I, did I, did I do enough that one of those guys could have made it? That's what you carry around. I think, I think all the guys do, but I think the medics especially because they're the only lifeline between point of contact with the enemy and injury to being in a surgical suite within 60 minutes. Because if we could get a guy that was wounded into a helicopter into a surgical suite within 60 minutes, they had a 97% chance of survival. That's how great the survival rate is in Afghanistan and Iraq. The problem is, is with the overturned vehicle or a shot in the head, there's nothing, you can't do anything about a bullet wound to the head with a high caliber sniper rifle. Um, there's nothing you can physically do to lift an up armored Humvee off of somebody under the water. But at the same time, it, it's still that survivor's guilt that everybody carries because everybody knows somebody they were close to that didn't make it back. And, um, it's kind of like those skeletons in your closet, you know, the things that you carry around in those dark places that, you know, sometimes you just can't not think about it. And so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like that, but those are a couple examples, I guess, of, of things that from Iraq that really stand out to me as tough, tough incidents, uh, and loss of life. And, you know, those people died for our freedom.